Having explained the closed circuit spirometry test method to the patient, demonstrated the procedure, and answered any questions the patient may have had, it is time to perform the actual testing. With the patient sitting up straight, instruct him or her to place the mouthpiece in his or her mouth, breathe naturally for a short time, then breathe in as deeply as possible. Observe the patient's effort and accessory muscles as he or she breathes in deeply, ensuring that he or she breathes in to total lung capacity. Instruct the patient to blow out hard and fast as you observe the graphic displays. The patient should not hold his or her breath at total lung capacity. Next, instruct the patient to continue to squeeze all the air out for at least six seconds and until the volume time curve shows at least a one second plateau. When a flow volume loop is being performed, instruct the patient to breathe back in as rapidly as possible to total lung capacity. Have the patient remove the mouthpiece and rest between trials. Trials executed without adequate resting time in between can lead to a less than maximal patient effort. Use that rest time to re-instruct as needed. Some patients may experience dizziness or syncope and may not be able to continue exhaling for the requisite minimum of six seconds. If this occurs, document it in the test report. The patient should repeat the maneuver until three acceptable trials have been performed. When three acceptable trials have been performed, evaluate the best two of the three for repeatability criteria. If acceptability and repeatability criteria aren't met after eight attempts, the ATS-ERS recommends that you make a clinical decision to continue or discontinue testing. Factors to consider when making that clinical decision should be made based on the patient's ability to continue, the patient's age and understanding of the procedure, and likelihood that further testing would achieve the desired result. At the start of a test maneuver, the patient should not hold his or her breath at total lung capacity. He or she should blow out hard and fast, directly after having breathed in as deeply as possible. The patient should continue to exhale for at least six seconds. At least a one-second plateau must be observed on the volume time curve. Before moving on to the next unit, we'll take a moment and pose a few questions that you can ask yourself when determining if a spirometry test session is complete. Have three acceptable tests been performed? Has repeatability criteria been met? Have at least eight tests been performed? Can or should the patient continue testing? Are the inspiratory flow patterns repeatable with maximal effort? 